in a world with the unknown, unseen, and often forgotten, there is one team that will go above and beyond to find the truth. Welcome to Paranormal Investigation. The team is called to check out the Masonic Temple located in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. What hidden secrets are in this three-story brick temple built in 1913? Can Rodney test his abilities to connect the unknown and feel right about rooms without taking the tour? From a girl named Abby and her father that still haunts the temple, to a mystery woman named Patricia, the team indeed has a lot to investigate in this historic episode of Paranormal Investigation. The Historic Tour I am recording, no, so you can talk whenever you want. It, it matches the town's like almost like a historic look. So. No, for the most part, you all will have free reign of the building. Okay. Uh, there's a couple areas of staff where we can't let you go. Mm -hmm. uh, safety reasons in Absolutely. offices. Right. Can't in offices. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Uh, but for other than that, most part, yeah, you'll have free reign of the building. It's your time. Uh, feel free to come and go, step outside, smoke, you want to eat, eat, just, you know, pick up after yourselves. Uh, well, we go around. I'm Victor Hardy. Uh, this is my wife, Megan. Uh, I'm Jessica. I'm Jason. I'm Angela. My name's Rodney. I'm Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Mike. 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 Mike Bridge. <laughs> Jeff Austin. Cool, cool. Uh, um, yeah, wherever you think we should go. Like, well, the first thing I'd like to know is when I give the history of the tour, do you want the claims or not? Some people like claims, some people don't. Oh, absolutely. It helps with the... Like names and stuff, so okay. we can start going. Hey, well, some people are like, I don't want to know the claims that way. They catch on that area that's independent, you know. But all right. Mine, right? Is there anybody that wants to be left out of the claims or anything? I'm good okay. with okay. Because a lot of times they want to know Damn. where to stay. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's the main like, thing. Like, stay out of it. You want to stay out of the seat, out of this see this. what you can feel on your own? Yeah. I'm okay. Sometimes we, we have work that way. They get their own feelings, and it's not influenced by what you guys tell us. Base camp. Well, first of all, welcome to Morris Lodge number 76. Uh, this is an active lodge. May you still meet here. Easter Star meets here. Your bright bodies meet here. It's still, it's still an active lodge. It's a base where we say, please be respectful. You know, you're here for one night. We're here all the time. Whatever's going on, we get along with it. We want to keep it that way. We've never had anything negative or harmful happen in here. Stay positive. Uh, <laughs> Morrison Lodge was originally chartered by the Grand Lodge, Kentucky in 1823, here in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. Uh, from what we understand, the original lodge did stand on this exact location. Uh, throughout the 1800s, the downstairs part of the portion lodge was the Hardin County Academy, which was an all-girls school slash orphanage. The upstairs part of the building did belong to the Masons, where they held their meetings and stuff like that. You understand, back in the 1800s, stuff like that, 1840s, 50s, such like that, you didn't get your car or wagon to go down Dixie Highway and get here. People actually lived in the building at that point in time, took rotational cycles, especially with the orphanage being in here. <clears throat> That's where we do. I don't know how much research you've already done on the building about some of the possible spirits or energies here, but we do believe two of them go back to that time frame. That's Charles Wintersmith and the little girl Abby. We believe Abby's connected to the Hardin County Academy. Charles Wintersmith is a past master of the lodge, also is a past grandmaster of the state. 
December 26, 1864, John Hunt Morgan and his raiders came through the Battle of Elizabeth Town, as it can be known, below the railroad trestles to cut supply lines between North and South during the Civil War. Uh, when the battle ensued, the white building behind us, which is now the Shrine Club, was used as the field hospital. The lodge was used as the carryover hospital, and we were on the few buildings at that point in time, the basement was used as a morgue. The basement is one of the few places I can't let you go, but we have conducted spare, our own experiments and stuff down in the basement. We have never caught anything down there, so you're not missing much other than old rust and boilers, dust and webs and spiders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We can do without spiders, right? Uh, <laughs> and it's not heated, so you're fine. Yay! <laughs> uh, 1908, around 1908, most of downtown Elizabeth Town burned. Uh, the lodge went with it. The current mm -hmm. building you're standing in was built in 1913, the first Masonic meeting. Yeah, it was built in 1913. Uh, once again, it was built for the purpose of Freemasonry, the Masons own a sense. The downstairs area was leased off for a bunch of years to different business and stuff to help pay off the bills and the cost of the building and everything. So the downstairs areas here, we've had lawyers, doctors, dentists, a TV shop. What was it? You found a cable company you rented out yeah. at one point something? So in the late 60s, who knew there was a cable company? Cable. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> you know, so some of the stuff we're still for, we just found that last night. That is awesome. So, so you're still, still constantly learning. Learning, learning stuff place. ourselves. And unfortunately, though, because of the history of time and lack of records, some of the stuff's been passed out word of mouth. So we can't back up everything either mm -hmm. until we we're always looking for proof. Uh, so, any questions so far before we start moving through the building? No. no. The building is built on the original foundation. Yeah. Yes. From what we understand, this building is built on the original foundation. You can see a lot outside between the beverage stone and the brick. Yeah. And a lot of the structures, from what we understand, identical to the original building. Mine's a few things, like the original was wood, this one's brick, and stuff like that. Uh, we've actually also seen the meeting notes from back in like 1912 and stuff like that, when they were built under construction, mm -hmm. where the Masons were meeting another part of those building. And they took the votes to whether to put electricity and plumbing in here because they were such new ideas and weren't sure if they wanted to mess with it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that is awesome. The Blue Room. We call this the Blue Room. I'm sure it's kind of obvious why we refer to the Blue Room. The Masons here refer to different rooms. That's why different titles to help us keep track of what's what in different parts of the building. We know that this room at one point in time was a doctor's office, and it was also been a church and stuff like that over the years. Um, as far as claims of paranormal activity go, we've got EVPs from a woman named Patricia in here. We don't have a last name on her. We just get a first name. And a female, we believe she's intelligent from some of the responses we've also got over from the years. Uh, usually by trigger objects and stuff like that. We was in here several years ago playing 20s and 30s music. We believe she passed, that's the time she passed away in the doctor's office from an allergic reaction to the anesthetics. We was in here one night doing some trigger objects, had some old big band music, 20s and 30s playing. Asked, you know, do you know who this is? We got responses like yes on the ghost boxes and hack shacks and stuff like that. And even mentioned who was playing. We was listening to Glenn Miller. And said Glenn Miller. So, we think she's intelligent. We don't have a last name or anything on her. Uh, we've also seen shadow figures in here, uh, mostly moving across this wall. You know, these windows are kind of high up, but we've seen them kind of move along here to the point you can actually see them kind of block out the light and they move down. Nice. Rooms are mostly just used for junk storage or inactive throughout the year. We've referred to this as the holiday room. This is where we set up and do our free pictures with Santa, Christmas, and stuff like that. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do that this year because of the COVID thing. But uh, when we do do it, it's usually free to all the kids. We usually get almost sometimes 200 kids in here during Christmas season. That's awesome. Nice. Um, this is where we store everything for our haunted house. We do it in October for one of our fundraisers. So if you come through here in the dark, see the skeleton or whatever, we're not messing with you. Find <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's something in that room back there. Go back there. Oh man, you have to send me in with him so when he screams, I get it on camera. <laughs> Go ahead. And just one thing, uh, we are the only haunted house inside of an actual haunted house in Elizabeth Town. I don't know if any of y'all have ever. I never even been, like, I didn't even know. Like I said, that's what I saw the signs this Halloween. The library. All right, this is the library. Uh, this is one of the rooms we like to point out. Um, like I said, you'll have access to all these rooms. Just please don't touch anything in here. Absolutely. We're, as you can see, we're trying to go through, organize things, clean things up, clear them out. Uh, but we got a lot of stuff in here that wants to turn to dust if you touch it because it's going on 200 years old. Right. Please do not touch anything in here or move things because we'll be like, I know I set that here. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, don't be in here. 
We really haven't had much happen in this room, though. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had one personal experience happen in this room, mm -hmm. and uh, that was in Haunted House year before last. Yeah. Uh, one of our volunteers for the Haunted House was in here, because as the people go through, they were down here by this door. As people cut through that hallway, they'd bang on the door to get them. Mm -hmm. Well, as they was waiting for the next group to come through, they're down there waiting. And they turned around and they thought they saw somebody standing here like this going over the books for a second and disappear. Um, the volunteer came out and said, I'm not working that room. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, like I said, so we've had one or two personal experiences, but we've never had any documentation in this room. Base camp. Okay, back to this room. Yay! Now that we're actually talking about the rooms themselves. This room is where we understand the dentist office used to be. Mm -hmm. Um, the dentist chair pretty much sat right up where that speaker and stuff is at. Okay. Now, the reason we bring up this room is I mentioned Patricia in the other room. Yes. Patricia's also been picked up in this room. Wow, so she travels. Yeah, so she moves in mm -hmm. this general area between these two. Mm -hmm. From what we do understand, she passed away from allergic reaction to anesthetics. Mm -hmm. We're unclear if it was in the doctor's office or the dentist office. Because at that point in time, 20s, 30s, it was dangerous regardless. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, the one thing we have noticed about this room and that we cannot understand or have a reasonable explanation for is between 10.20 and 10.40 at night is usually when this room gets the most active. That's where we've caught the EVPs from her and we usually get a pretty good on digital dousing in this room. Yes. But just that 20 minute window. That's the why. hot time. Yeah. <laughs> nice. We don't know why. It's, okay. I so can't explain it. Send an alarm on your girl's phones. 10.20 and 10.40. The Temple Room. Alright, this is the ante room to the lodge. This is where members will come in, but we'll sign a little register book so we know who was at the meetings at night, stuff like that. Uh, <clears throat> best thing about this room is we've had music played in this room. Without a... <laughs> without, we had one member sit down here one night waiting to enter the lodge. The lodge already opened, so he's waiting for his turn to come in because he came in a little bit late and stuff. <laughs> came out we're like sorry I took him and he's like I didn't mind sitting there because I was listening to the violin music y'all were playing for me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you stash them at? Right. No, no, no violins, no, no speakers. speakers, there's no radio. There probably hasn't been a violin in this building in 80 years. <laughs> wow. <laughs> if not, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Listen for violins. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I noticed there's some men in the pictures. This is the main room of the lodge. You know, this is where the meetings are held and stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> Mason still has me secrets as long as people think we do, so please feel free to ask. The worst that's going to happen is like, I can't tell you that specific. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the reason I bring up that to a point is sometimes we've had people catch EVPs and stuff like that in here. It's like, I know it's saying something, but I don't know what it's saying. Feel free to bring that to us. Because okay. sometimes it'll be something Masonic. We can't tell you what you have, but we can definitely say, yes, you have something. <laughs> uh, okay, so we hear something and we're like, oh, that's just yeah, joke. It's, you know, I don't it's know better what to put is. it to the side and say, hey, yeah. can you, you know, like, well, yeah, you caught something. Awesome. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, because like, I take it different, like, tone languages. Well, different words or phrases that... Secret oh, words. That's awesome. So we don't have a lot of secrets. What few secrets we do have are usually for recognition of other Masons. Awesome. So that might just be his way of trying to see if you're a Mason. If you don't know it... Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you know, then you're not a Mason. <laughs> um, if there had to be an epicenter of activity for this building, though, it would be this room. We've had everything happen in this room. Um, we've had shadow figures move in, block out the lights of these windows, be seen from multiple perspectives. They cut across the room from over there, up this way, up the stairs, across the balcony, down the stairs, cut behind these curtains. Um, We've had things move around here. We've got stuff up on the balcony from over where they keep toys for Abby. We found toys down here, chains down here. Abby's been seen peeking up over the rails or behind the curtains. People sitting in the chairs will feel like tugs on their shirt or different things. Um, uh, I know I'm forgetting stuff here. There's 
so much going on in the <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever gained the same history twice. <laughs> no, there's too much history. Um, the green orbs. No. <laughs> green orbs. Are... Yeah, we've actually had orbs in here, but not on cameras. You can actually see them with your own eyes. They'll light up green and move across the room real quick. Holy cow. See, that's an orb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not dust, moisture, or a bug. <laughs> That's awesome. Or one hell of a light. It casts a shadow and it casts light across. From the windows. Watch it for a couple minutes, so you'll see the pattern. You'll see yeah. the pattern. You'll see that there is a pattern. You know. uh, there have been times I, I like to sit up here and just in the dark watch, see what's going on. <laughs> I was up here one night and all of a sudden I seen a new light and I was like, oh, what was that? You know, I started checking <laughs> it out and it happened again. And a little bit later, it happened again. I'm like, ah, oh, okay, that something's not right. They put a new sign out here at the intersection. Oh! It reflected the light up here. I think it was in a different place. Mm -hmm. So. Threw you off for a minute. Threw me off for a little bit. There you go. Right. One of the spirits we have here, we do believe, is tells a man by the name of Charles Wintersmith. Charles Wintersmith is actually the gold picture on the right there. He's the one that I mentioned was a past master of laws, past grand master of the state. Um, we believe he was at his father. Like I said, she appears to be, I've never personally seen her. I've, I've heard her plenty of times, I've heard her laugh, I've heard her sing, I've heard her run around and do different things, but I've never personally seen her. Those that have claimed to have seen her claim to see, she appears to be about six to eight years old. You know, uh, we have located her grave, she's actually buried here on Cemetery Hill. According to her tombstone, though, she was 16. Oh, wow. But. This yeah. 1840s, 1850s, different world. She could have been married and had kids and everything else by then. We don't know. <laughs> uh, the more active she gets, the more likely Charles will let himself be known. Okay. Usually like a father trying to rein in a child that's, you know, right. quiet time of play. Um, <clears throat> she was actually at really active one night. People were trying to get responses from her and stuff like that. And uh, they was like, hey, Abby, if that was you, can you do it again? And then they had a male voice cut in and said, no, not now. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was awesome. Daddy's saying stop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Literally everything stopped at that really? time. They weren't wow. getting anything after that. Wow. That is awesome. Uh, another funny one that I liked uh, a couple years ago, we had some girls up here in the laundry room because Freemason Bree is a fraternity. It's males. males. Mm -hmm. Had a couple females up here one night walking around our little altar in the middle of the room here doing what they thought the Masons did. You know? It's like, well, what they do what the Masons do? So he's walking around the altar doing different things. They had a very clear EVP come in from male voice going, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've had that happen during the meetings and stuff. We've had door handles jiggle, knocks on the doors. You know, that's happened while we're in meetings sometimes. Uh, it'd be funny because, you know, the master of the water, the president of the club, will, you know, tell the one else, hey, go check who's at the door. There'll be nobody there. <laughs> We don't uh, have to actually go all the way down this hall. If you get lost part of the building, just keep walking. It horseshoes around. It's all circles. So if you follow back around this curve, it's just going to go to where we came in over here. I'm just going to step here for a second, point out one or two things. First of all, there's another restroom that does work. Y'all need that while you're up here. EMF meters, it'll go off around this a lot too, depending on what's running. <laughs> Pro tip. <laughs> This goes up to the third floor dining room. We'll get up there in a minute. Uh, we refer to these as Wintersmith stairs. Uh, this is where we think Charles likes to just hang out and keep an eye on things. Uh, we've had several people, even members of the lodge, come through here. They get an uneasy feeling in this hallway late at night, like they're being watched or somebody's right behind them. Uh, and we've even had supposed psychics, uh, if people have their different opinions on them. But we've had one or two in here that have blindly just come in and be like, there's somebody on the stairs keeping an eye on the building. And they'll go out there and point at Charles's picture and be like, that's the guy on the stairs. Wow. That's wow. awesome. So take that for what you will. <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, we can go back in here now. Yeah, see if we've also got Charles's picture. Second one to the left right here. No, sit right here and look down the hallway and be like, that's him. Wow. <laughs> Instant like. <laughs> the balcony. If you're up on the balcony, please be careful in the dark. You'll notice it is a real low rail. That's what that I is a decent drop. 
<laughs> Good thing we signed those papers. Also, please watch it on this side. There's an old trap door in the floor. Uh, so, you know, I would very be cautious standing over there too much unless you will take the risk of being in the closet underneath it. Okay. <laughs> Different people over the years brought different things for here for Abby and left them. You know, we do know she plays with the toys sometimes. I don't know, like I said, I don't know how much research you did before you came here tonight. There is a video out on YouTube from a group called St. Matthew's Paranormal where they caught one of the dolls there moving, yeah. coming off the balcony and stuff. Um, like I said, we've also found toys out on the floor, the change. We was in here one night, kept hearing a odd thunk noise. It was the change getting flicked off at us. Really. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, a little light up bowl. Uh, so we've also seen shadow figures moving up here on the balcony and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also found out that this was the second movie theater in Hardin County. Oh. Uh, we know that we knew that it was a movie theater. We, we found out it was the second one. The only movie theater older than us was the old Vine Grove Optimus Club. Oh. Um, when they showed the movies, from what we understand, though, they would sit down there mm -hmm. and look up this way. You can see the screen right there. They put it, they pull oh, it down. Yeah. And this is the old projection booth where they project the image on the screen backwards. Everybody down there would see it the right way. Yeah. Okay. This is oh, back when they did the old single slides and mm -hmm. silent movies. That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. This is another area I can't let you go. Okay. Kind of like the trap door. Right. <laughs> You're not missing much other than some dead <coughs> skeletons and broken out windows up there in the old fire watch. Mm -hmm. uh, what about oh, the paint paint? A couple years ago, we had a member of the lodge come back from service country overseas. Mm -hmm. uh, wanted to come in, help out, catch the lodge back up, so he'd been gone for over a year and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I needed to come in here and paint. Brought his uh, daughter in here with him one Saturday afternoon, got a key to the building, came in. Down here at the one desk, the big black chair mm -hmm. to the side, that's the secretary's desk. Put his daughter down there, some colored book crayons, you know, he came up here and started to paint. Mm -hmm. You see where the painting stopped? Yep. Yeah. You know, because he was sitting there painting and looked in the reflection. I thought his daughter was standing behind him. Oh. He's like, honey, I told you to stay downstairs. And then she says, daddy, I am downstairs. And he so, turned around and saw her turn back. The girl was gone in the reflection. So he it. packed up and left. <laughs> <laughs> he said, okay, bye. Um, he has not even been back to this building. He won't even come back for a meeting. It was that. He's oh, still a member, my but will not come back in this building. That stuff sticks with you. <laughs> The Blue Room. Refrigerator behind you. Hear that response? Let's replay that. Patricia, can you light this up for us? If you're in here, get 
give us a sign that you're here. You can make a noise. We'd like to talk to you. If there's anyone in here with us, let us know that you're here. 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 What do you think? Meanwhile, the temple room. What do you think? All right, we got live, guys. Okay, Get this guy up. Like I got all kinds of tightness, dude, anxiety and stuff. I'm not saying that's a direct result of being here, any kind of entities being around here. Um, so I won't say, oh my God, there's spirits here and I'm feeling anxious and I'm feeling a lot of anxiety. So I deal with anxiety issues to begin with. So I can't count that as, oh my God, it's a spirit, you know. But uh, my first reading of the night is, whatever is here is upset with the women. The women are not supposed to be here and it's upset. My whole attitude changed from one minute to the next. Like I said, I'm not going to say that has anything to be a direct result of being clairvoyant or whatever. Um, but yeah, whatever here is not happy with the women being here. Uh, this is an area that's forbidden for them. And um, I feel like nobody's going to be attacked or assaulted or anything like that. But um, whatever is here is going to let the women be known. And it's going to be known that uh, they're, they're not welcome here. So awesome. that's just my reading for the night. That's my first one. Greetings. Greetings. Hey. <laughs> Whatever these things are, all they, all these spirits work together, man. They all know what we do, and they know what our true feelings are, and they will feed off of it. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, you never know. That clicking noise up there. Yeah, I heard it. All right, uh, let's get this other recorder up there, and then do you all want to go up there and you got your spirit box up there? Yeah, the spirit box is in, up there in the corner. Yeah. Dude, I keep getting freaking chilled, bro. Let's go ahead and uh, get up I, there I, and. I like Dude, I, I'm just like buzzing with freaking. Look. Yeah. Yeah, you got the goosebumps. You see them? Mm hmm. Yeah, just document that that I do have goosebumps after getting chills. It has nothing to do with the coldness because it is kind of warm down here. Alright, this is Richard's first attempt to try to get some readings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Anybody out here with us? I hear there's a lovely little girl named Abigail. You want to play with us? You just got something. Yeah. You want to play? I like playing. What's your favorite game? If you come back to this box with the pretty lights, you can talk through it. Do you understand? I think she just said yes or something. Did you hear that response? Let's replay that. Yeah, that was clear cut. I don't know what it said. Yes. 
Can you tell us your name, sir? Dude, I, I just got the crook, 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 got the crook. That was a girl. Dude, I am getting the crazy chills. Like, look, 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 bro. Look, shine the light. Look at all the hairs on my body standing up. Look right. at that, guys. We want to know, what are you doing here? Yes. We hear that's the same voice, guys. I love your home. I'm thankful that they let us come here. Thank you. I want to thank you as well. I'm thankful for the both of you. Is there 
Meanwhile, the library. We've been told that you were seen in here looking through the books. Touch anything. <laughs> That's why I brought the light. <laughs> <clears throat> Which is so tempting considering we're surrounded by books. Right? <laughs> An interesting one with that. Exactly. Very interesting. You don't want to go back that way and loop back around? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because that just takes us right back to yeah, the dining room, right? Yeah, that's just the hallway. Yeah. What, you're like back, Angela? Um, I think I'm big right now. What? The, what the hell was that? What? You didn't hear that? What? what? Loud bump. No. No. Where? It's like right above here. There's a light on. Does that light just come on? Yes. It's probably motion censored. I know, because I just looked like this, and I was like... It just popped on. <laughs> Base camp. Yeah, I, before I said that, I said, I felt like he fell half, whoever was, was halfway down the stairs when they fell, and everybody's saying that they catch him, like, peeking around the corner, and that's, like, halfway down the stairs. <clears throat> and, but like I said, there's got to be a significant reason why he would be on them stairs, you know, and... Why he would be looking from that area. You would think. Yeah, like if he was waiting for somebody to catch him when he comes down the stairs or something, you know? You recording? I don't know. I'm recording. All right, let's get this thing going. We're going to be talking to Patricia. I thought Patricia was in the blue room. No, she, she comes, comes in, in between. Oh. Because this used to be um, a dentist's office in here. Oh, that's right. Guys. Oh, the light. Oh, nice. came on, guys. It came on. Patricia, is that you? Get that thing going. Oh, okay, that was you. Did Wait. you knock? Try to stop. Oh, that's not us. Hey, Patricia, can you knock that ball again? If that was you? That you was like bad. that ball back up again? I started recording. I already recorded it. You, didn't, you turned it off. I had to restart the recording. Oh. Oh, the ball just lit up again. Victor, did you touch it? No, no. Go, go. Hey, Patricia, is that you messing with that ball? Yes. Oh. Oh, my God. Let's replay that. No, no. Go, go. Hey, Patricia. Is that you messing with that ball? Yes. Oh. Oh. Is there a person that we could reach out for? 
Temple room. Everything from here. If it may or make that speaker get faster. Oh goodness. That was yes. a little girl. Abby. Oh, it got a lot faster. Hold on. And it echoes back here. that there are women down here? Did you hear that response? Let's replay that. Saying, but it is definitely Abby, are you thing. still here? Oh, Abby. Did you guys hear that? Hi, sweetie. Good. Can you play with your toys? Can you toss some change down to us? Let us know you're here, sweetie. Let your daughter play. Are they sure it's his daughter? They said they think it was. Oh, <laughs> 
The balcony. I figured that when I heard ouch. <laughs> What is lurking in the shadows? Let's look at that one more time. Charles. Charles. All right, everyone. So that was the temple. How did we, uh, I think we had all very unique experiences. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Voices. Voices. I think the voices were the best part. Uh, it, it definitely holds its own. Uh, anything you all want to let people know? It's cold. It's very pleasant. Cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, Super the cold. The people here from the Sasquatch are with the town. It's very gracious. You know, we're very grateful for David for him to allow us to come in here and do what we do. Um, very nice people. Yeah, they were very hospitable. They gave us the perfect history, told us all the signs of what it was and really made this event. Highly recommend you this place if you do any kind of investigating or if you just want to dabble in the unknown. This is the place to be. Or even drop sure. off a donation and support these boat and trip to the Sonic Club. Absolutely. All right. Well, it's cold, so we're out. Bye. Bye. The review. Do you like all the people that come here to visit you? Is that you messing with that ball? And with that, this historic temple is truly a haunted location in Elizabethtown, Kentucky. To learn more or to schedule your own investigation, please reach out to us and we will relay your information to the temple caretakers. Next time on Paranormal Investigations, join the team as they get to experience the true unknown of the abandoned Bethlehem Academy. Are the horrifying stories true? Is the team able to communicate to the spirits that haunt the historical landmark in Hardin County, Kentucky? Stay tuned for more Paranormal Investigations.